credit to the audience here who observed both of these national anthems impeccably with great sporting grace. The players will meet now at midcourt. They'll exchange a uh, token of the game, put it in their keepsake uh, treasure chest, and mark the day that they squared off representing their countries here in the finals of these under-19 World Championships. Mick's already gone to my colleague to the 1972 games. Any young viewers out there, the Olympics in 1972, the Soviet Union beat the Americans the first time the Americans ever lost in the Olympics. And, and so bitter were the Americans, Mick, that that uh, generation of players refused to claim their silver medals. It was uh, like uh, a controversial finish to that game, but this is a new generation of players. Uh, we're looking forward to some matchups across the floor as you get a look at the combined officiating groups in Spain, Dominican Republic, and Argentina. Nick, it's just mouth-watering matchups throughout the starting fives. You know, you start in the interior, you've got uh, Asia Wilson for the Americans, the Naismith High School Player of the Year. She was on this team in 2013 when the Americans won the gold. And she'll square off against a talented Russian player, Maria Vadieva, who was the under-16 European Champions MVP play with the senior women, the Russians at Eurobasket in 2015. Here's the lineup for the USA. Mick, maybe just a word on that interior matchup between Wilson and Vedieva. Yeah, I'll be interested to see whether they actually do guard each other because there's nothing to say that you couldn't uh, throw another player on each other player defensively so as to not to waste fouls because there's no doubt about it, Wilson and Vedieva are the two, the two focal points for offensively both teams. I mean, Nafisa Collier had 20 yesterday, Azura Stevens along with Wilson. That is a big 3-4-5 on any team. And look at the Russian team there. Watch out for number nine, Ksenia Levchenko, the point guard for Russia. She will have her work cut out against this 1-2-2 half-court press. The United States have swapped every other team in this tournament with. If Levchenko handles the press and doesn't turn the ball over in, trend, in, that, in, in silly places, and this team has a chance of surviving. Tatiana Sioma will uh, be the, the bodyguard for Maria Vadieva. Vadieva has just turned 17. She will be eligible in two years' time, but make no mistake, she will not be playing this tournament in two years' time. She is already a fully-fledged senior international, having played Eurobasket, second top scorer on the Russian women's national team in uh, June and July in Poland and Hungary. That is a player for the future, a superstar in the waiting. One of these teams have got talented benches. The Americans go very deep on their bench. Uh, Coach Staley will run. Of course, Don Staley will run players in and out. And similarly, the Russians have got uh, Risa Musina coming off the bench. You look at uh, three-time Olympic gold medal winner there, Don Staley at the helm of the American team. For the Russians, Musina has four double-doubles. She has more double-doubles than Maria Vadieva. So coming off the bench, the Russians have their own firepower as well. Number five, will be the Americans in the blue uniforms. You can see Dmitry Donskov, the coach of the Russians, in their white uniforms. And, uh, just if you haven't had a chance to see any play in this tournament yet, the Americans, as my colleague McBeth has said, have come out in every game and shown a 1-2-2 half-court trap. So the decision-making of Ksenia Levchenko will be critical for the Russians to enjoy success. Typically, it is Azare Stevens who's at the top of the press number eight for the Americans. And so we will see how that develops. Both of these teams come into today's game with a perfect six and over record. They've had comfortable wins throughout. The margin of victory for the Americans has been 38 points, for the Russians has been 34 points. And just to add to the ceremony of the occasion, we're looking at the Americans who are the America's region champion from 2014 in Colorado. And the Russians are here by nature of the fact that not only are they the hosts, Mick, but they won the European Championship gold medal back in the summer of 2014 as well. So the two champions here going at each other. So the referee will step into the center circle. We're seconds away from tipping it off in the gold medal match of the 11th edition of the FIBA Under-19 World Championships. I think the referees are just asking for the music to turn off. Just like referees spoil everyone's fun. First possession, the hands of Gabby Ortiz, the point guard for the Americans. And she will get them into their first offense. Here's Wilson gets an early touch. She'll move it on to Collier, who powers it up and won't drop. Collier gets her own rebound. That shot blocked by Sioma. Wilson pulls the trigger and a velvet touch from number 14. Yeah, nice touch indeed. Asia Wilson just showing the... Uh, 
the variety of skills she has. And look at Vadieva back to break the press. That's impressive too. The off guard to, to help Levchenko out to break that press. And the Americans settling this in 2-3 zone coming out of the press. Levchenko moves it on to Solskaya. She can shoot it. And Solskaya knocks down the first three. And look down at Coach Staley. She's very upset with the rotation that zone. Not happy they didn't come out and show it. There's a three-point shooting team to Russia. Come out in the zone is very bold. Here's a pass to the wing. Player looks inside. But Stevens gets a little screen. Passing to Stevens, who powers it up. It's off the mark. And the Russians on the break. It's a three on two. Kuplinova fans out to the wing and kicks it back to Levchenko. Gets it back. Kuplinova time to line up her three. It's off the mark. In the first contest between Vadieva and Wilson, Wilson I, wins it. I tell you what, Liv, I can only think that uh, Coach Staley is very frightened of a one-on-one -on -one matchup defensively, but I cannot believe that's true. Here's a two-on-one, Vadieva misses the chippy one. Back come the Americans, it's turned over, it's a frenetic pace from both teams early on here. As the teams try and settle into the game and settle their nerves. Well, I'll be very intrigued to know why Coach Staley's in the zone to begin this game. It's uh, definitely, we haven't seen it all tournament. There's a three from Levchenko on the way. That draws iron. But you know Wilson what? rises for her rebound. Two threes have gone begging. Maybe it was the right choice. And the Russians just one for three from behind the arc early on. Ortiz. Collier. Moves it on to Moore. Moore just spilled it. Chuck clock at five. Stevens going to have to deal. Ortiz lets fly. Her three's on the way. That's no good. Got bodies on the floor already. Vadieva on the deck. He's got a foul against the Americans. It is on. Four, three, and four. Yeah. One thing is for certain, Liam, that these two teams can rebound. Therefore, they can both box out. And there's a huge mountain stopping both teams getting to the offensive board. That might be a huge key. Well, here's the one, two, two trap from the Americans. Stevens at the point of it with her length. They stay in that one, two, two shape. And the pass intercepted inside. Wilson snaps a pass ahead to Stevens who catches and finishes Mick. That's no easy task for a long player like Stevens. Yeah, she's very assured. Took a time, made sure. You know, these rims we've seen them are very loose. Tough to uh, get a nice roll on them. Vadieva flashes to the middle and dissipates the pressure. Polovskaya has made one from there. Count it, number two! Polovskaya, two for two from behind the rainbow. And Angel Wilson wasn't happy. Looked straight over to the bench to see uh, if that was what she was supposed to be doing, closing out that far out. Ortiz rides the high screen. Wilson has to come away from the basket to get it. Here's Stevens. Stevens lets fly, and she shows a nice touch. Yeah, she's got all the ability, Azura Stevens. Can shoot it, can dribble it, got length. It's those passes against the press. The United States will not be unhappy to see. Levchenko, baseline jump shot, no good. Kept alive by Sioma. Americans trying to figure out their own defense. And Kulovskaya penetrates to the basket. Well, Kulovskaya has already hit the back-to-back -back trays and then decides just to drive on the hoop. And uh, Stevens picks up her first foul. She has all six of Russia's points and a uh, chance to get the next two. This is... Uh, Daria Kolosovskaya, as I mentioned in my opening comments, she was the MVP of the under-18 European Championships last summer, goes one for two from the line. Vadier with her first offensive rebound, kicks. This time Kolosovskaya throws it right back inside. Vadier lost it. Wilson picked it up. She lost it. is going to spot it from the elbow. That's good. Yeah. Both teams a little bit nervous. She has, handle. she has all nine points, Kolosovskaya. Unbelievable. Look at that scoreline. Nobody else is on the board. Collier gets swallowed up by white jerseys. The pass to Ortiz just a little bit too far in front of Collier to lead her to the basket. I'm going to give you another. The temperature in this gym has changed. Since the end of the bronze medal game to this game, I'm, I'm feeling hotter. I don't know whether the air conditioning's been turned off, make it a little more heated in here. And the Russians have yet to turn it over against the press. 
Wagner passing over the top of the zone. Pilevskaya again, if she makes it. Ortiz with the long rebound. Stevens. Stevens. I'm so impressed with her athleticism, Nick. I thought Ortiz gave it to her too early. She didn't establish post position, but Stevens got it and laid it in. Yeah, she took poor defense, really. Gambling for the ball. And that's where the rusher have to be very careful against this press. Gadieva in the high post. Her pass intended for Sioma off the mark. And a turnover. No, you can't deal with the pressure until you feel the pressure. And that's exactly what Russia had to sit through watching the USA put this press on through the tournament. Now they're experiencing it. Now you see little chinks. But uh, they need to settle down. They'll be fine. And as for the USA, they'll just keep fire firing inside. At some point, Russia will go to zone. Ortiz not even looking to score. Trying to get the big players involved. Here's Wilson on her right hand. And Vadieva strips her. Outlet to Levchenko. That's a block and steal. We saw that against the Australians yesterday, Mick. Vadieva has those strong hands. She's has a proclivity to rip the ball out of her opponent's hands. Now she posts up, goes at Wilson, and scores. Yeah, that's the matchup they don't want. That's the one-on-one -on -one that uh, is tough to get to. She's such a soft touch player. You know, I said last night in rest, in rest up, best player in the world for age, and maybe Asia Wilson might have something to say about that, and maybe that young lady too. So my Zori Stevens, the young lady who was with Duke when they went to the Sweet 16 of the NCAAs this year. Nazare at the top of that press now. She only hit three threes into this uh, game, coming into this game. She's hit two already. Sadieva moves it on to Sioma. And she's fouled from behind by Ortiz. Unselfish play by Maria Sadieva. Yeah, that's right. Some who's seen it just come in the game for Sioma there. Number four has got that pass from Sadieva. Uh, well, we've got our first timeout here from Chekhov, Russia in this final match. The gold medal game of the 11th edition of the FIBA Under-19 World Championships. So it's 12-11. Americans with a slender lead. Russians come back and they'll go to the line. When we break this timeout, Nick, we're not surprised at all by the fact that the Americans have coming at 1-2-2. Two, two. They've been doing it the whole tournament. Your thoughts on uh, how Russia are attacking it? Yeah, it's, uh, I think they look a little tentative, and that does, I think, vote in the favor of the U.S. because they'll just keep going with it, and they'll, even if they get four, six, eight points off it through the game, it's eight points you wouldn't have got sitting back in a half-court man, so... All credit to them because I don't think Russia really found the key to finding layups, which is what you want to do if you're going to get a team to break off a press. So uh, I would be more than heart to see Levchenko and uh, Kolosovskaya just causing a few murmurs in terms of breaking that press right now. It goes back to what I said, you can't deal with pressure until you've felt it to begin with. This is Raisa Musina at the free throw line. Last summer, Messina in the under-16 European Championships in Hungary was an all-tournament selection. And she comes off the bench, provides quality minutes for the Russians. You Beautiful said, touch from the well, You said before, double-double merchant, four in the tournament. And uh, she may hold a key for Russia in terms of whether they turn this one up, gold or silver. Of course, we've got Maiga to come as well for the Russians, another post player. Here's Dangerfield in the game for the Americans. Wilson trying to find space. Dangerfield stops and pops. That's no good. Wilson with the rebound. Can she score? She can't convert. Gets it again. This time she powers it up and in. Yeah, just a tough, tough competitor is Asia Wilson. You know, the first shot was bothered by Vadieva. She made sure she was going to make that second one, though. Levchenko now in the trap. A pass is well, fortuitous that it ends up in the hands of sky who moves it on to Musina, and that's what you talked about, Nick, attacking the back of the press, trying to get layups. Uh, and the, unfortunately for the States, you know, they're going to have a lot of opportunities where Russia are going to break the press, they're going to look to attack, and when you go to block that shot, yeah, it may be a block shot. That looked very clean to me. But the referees are under pressure themselves, and all of a sudden, Aja Wilson's got her first foul of the game. She can ill afford to get into foul trouble. 
Well, just looking up at the scoreboard to our right, the Americans with 14 fouls, the Russians yet to foul. We've seen a three from three from the line. So composed. She remains perfect. So Shatrice Wright, White, that'll give Martin's going to come in for Stevens. She's earned her break as uh, Azare Stevens. Dangerfield gets it across the midcourt strike for the Americans. Looks eyeball to eyeball with Levchenko. Oh, Wilson was open on a curl cut. Didn't get it. Now in the low post. Faces. That's off the mark. That's not a bad matchup for USA to get into. They want to go at Vadieva as much as they all the way around to Wilson. Maybe Wilson needs to keep driving. Levchenko guarded by Moore. Americans in man to man. They scramble for their matchups. Strong drive by Messina and an accomplished finish with the left hand. Yeah, and that's just a very, very tough move. Off a left hand, soft touch off these rims with pressure. Dangerfield dispossessed by Levchenko. Picked her pocket clean. It's a three on two for the Russians. Gadieva oh my travels. My goodness. Double crossover from Levchenko on Dangerfield. You know what? That was not a travel either. That was just a, what's this? There's a step, there's a jump stop there, and she gets fouled. Well, Levchenko with a terrific Tough steal. Break. Moore. Call your feathers have passed down to Wilson. And she's fouled by Messina. Great help from Messina. Saw the problem, saw that love pass coming to Wilson. Uh, and look at it, she comes flying over with her hands up. It's definitely a foul as Wilson catches, she gets bundled over. But you love to see Musina rotate from that help side to uh, help game, her game on. Great coaching, great understanding of the game. Inside to Collier, who finishes off a good back screen by White. Beautiful screen from White, was it? Solid, just uh, hit the defense hard. American soft on the 1 2 2 this time. Well, you know what you'll do? You'll lose confidence if you're not careful. When you give up layups. Yeah, no, the players are turning around to Coach Staley. What's going on? That's not a good sign at all. You've got to pick up man-to-man -man out of the press. Full stop. That's exactly my point. The Americans don't know what defense to go to once the ball gets across half court. Pass intended for White, and it's knocked out of bounds. There's a better cream overs in the game. 15 for Russia. Always makes me laugh with all the stylish uniforms that come in the game today. And I'm looking at the Russian numbers, they look like somebody's drawn them on. <laughs> with, a, with, a, with a sharpie pen. Joselina Maiga comes in, the number 13 for Russia. Jump shot off the mark by Moore. Well, somebody wanted it more than that, than uh, Moore there. It's Primova who came up with it, and now Levchenko directs traffic for the Russians. Uses the ball screen of Maiga. Primova lets fly with a shot from distance. That's no good. Wilson with the rebound. She's guarded by two people. Can the Americans break? Dangerfield in the open court. Bounce pass to Collier. And she finishes. That's a nice work. Now, Nafisa Collier, that's her fourth point of the game. She was inspirational in the semifinal last night. This, wow. this is the easy pass against the press that he's got to make. Wilson might have got away with a foul, but it's last touch by a white jersey. So the Americans get it on the turnover. Dangerfield looks to Staley for the offense. It is hard to hear in this arena with a din of noise. All the noisemakers. Great atmosphere. Wilson on the low blocks. That's a hard pass to feather in. White comes up with it. And Dangerfield, Mick, just trying to put that ball right on the dinner plate when Wilson's surrounded by three white jerseys. Well, Maiga went to front Wilson straight away, therefore he makes it hard, that pass much harder. And of course, you can't see what's coming from the weak side. I think Chatrice White gets away with a, a cheap one here. White got the shooter's roll in the first free throw, plays her basketball at the University of Illinois. Only yeah. average, only averages 14 minutes a game, two for three on the line from the whole tournament. But she's more of a role player. 
It's the first time she's worn the USA jersey. McDonald's All-American misses the second. Lomachenko. Guided by Moore. It's a strange matchup. And the Americans scramble to try and get their matchups. Polovskaya goes in. She has 11. The, mix. the Americans are a mess in their half-court defense. Yeah, it just, uh, I'm not sure. There's a double team on, on, on a pass on the wing. It's very, very... The rotations aren't great. It's definitely new for them this, in this game. Closing seconds of this first quarter. Wilson off the mark. White trying to take out the trash. She can't come up with it. The last touch by a blue jersey. So so the last team possession. Team Great team move from AJ Wilson. She's going to come out. Stevens comes in. But, you know, it was beautiful defense from Maiga, too. Chantrice White missed an opportunity there. 1 2 2 press again for the States. Just a couple seconds left. So, so I beg your pardon. Kolovsky is going to let it out. At the end of one quarter of play, the hosts lead the defending champions. It's Russia 21, the USA 19 in the FIBA Under-19 World Championships in basketball. And we'll take a look at some statistics here just to see the story of the game. You can see Russia's numbers, 5 of 7 inside the arc. You look at the number of shots taken. The USA have taken 20 shots combined. Russia only 13 shots combined. I think might see a few more turnovers against Russia, but they still lead by two. Rebounding has always got to be easy, I think, in this game. I don't think it's going to be a, too much of a factor. Five offensive rebounds for the United States. And turnovers five to four in favor of Russia. It wasn't as bad as I thought. Look at that, Nick. Steals the Americans who've been pressing throughout. Only two steals, and the Russians have got four steals. So you don't necessarily have to show pressure to apply pressure. You uh, understand my meaning. Yeah, make it. Philosophically, the Americans have said throughout this whole tournament, we are going to half court trap you one, two, two. Do they come out of that mindset here or do they stay in it? Well, you only come out that's hurting you, don't you? And my, only, my only question mark is here is that's not hurting. What's hurting them is from foul line down below because I'm not sure what defense they're in. They're, it seems like they're in a zone, but the responsibility is in that zone towards where the ball is, and, and it's just not quite. I'm not sure. We'll wait and see. Hopefully they'll come out and just play man to man. But that may leave this matchup that, that I think I'm suspecting the field they're afraid of. Daddy Ava, one on one in the low post. But just to talk a, a little bit about that, oftentimes teams, when they show some extended pressure, be it uh, three quarter court as the Americans are, full court, it's often easier just to come back into a zone. Your defensive assignments are just easy. You don't have to scramble and match up. Well, if that was if it was just a zone, it wouldn't. I don't think it'd be so much of a problem. But look at the score with 19 points out of two players who aren't their best player. Lucina and Kolosovskaya. And I think you're right, if it is just a zone, it's easy, but the Americans sometimes are in two minds. Are they in man, are they in zone? We'll see if the coaching staff have sorted it out for the Americans. It's their possession as we begin the second quarter of play. The Americans come out with Dangerfield, Stevens, Moore, White, and Collier. Collier with the ball now. Stevens hangs on to the pass just. Dangerfield now with the shot clock at five. Gonna have to make something happen. A little hesitation dribble up the window, no good. White can power it up. And we have a 24 second shot clock violation as the ball did not strike the rim. Tough work from Chetrice White there. Got in and did the dirty work. Just couldn't quite get the ball up after she caught it. She may feel she was a bit of contact there from. Nadieva, but nothing doing for the referees. Nadieva says, welcome to Russia. Well, that's how you beat the president. You put your tallest player in the middle and match up with the smallest player for the United States. Nadieva stands 1 meter 94, about 6 foot 5. Stevens comes up with a loose ball. Dangerfield in the open court. Crossover. Goes at Levchenko. Can't finish. And back come the Russians. Levchenko goes to the Jets. Levchenko. Oh, somehow, oh, I thought she was going to finish. Vanier with the rebound. She can't finish. Second effort. She draws the foul. Crazy, crazy little uh, section of play there. That almost little circus shot from Levchenko. She just lost control at the last minute. You love this from your big players, though, Mick. They follow the guards and, you know, hope for that miss. One thing Betty Ava does very well. She gets the rebound. She just doesn't bring it down, does she? Keeps it high, takes it right back up. And he's shooting about... Just over 50% for the tournament. She's got a weakness. The free throw line is uh, this tournament has been it. Maria, Maria. Maria 
Ben Hamer goes one for two. Malaysia rotation, Chatrice White will come in intermittently to re, uh, give Wilson a break. Give Collier a break, possibly uh, Stevens as well. Wilson, bounce pass inside to Stevens. He's trying to find space. And you've seen it, comes up with the stop. Good footwork, just got two buried under the basket. Bounce pass inside to Betty Aim, a little drop step and spin. Hey. Says to Joel Wilson, how do you like that? Oh, watch out. Wilson lost concentration and turns it right over. I don't know who she was passing to, it wasn't Dangerfield. lead of the game they lead by eight the Americans find themselves in a deficit it's an unusual position for them that was the bizarrest thing I think I've seen an inbound pass from Aja Wilson just lobbed up in the air I don't it, it had to be the danger field but it was way off danger field just couldn't looked at it and the piece of Collier was halfway down the floor therefore Levchenko just stole in but go back to that post move from Vadie but it was just dancing on ice it was uh very nimble footwork and combined with the soft hands, he's a tough, 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 tough prospect. Just looking up at the distribution of points now, it's uh, Kolosovskaya with 11 for the Russians, Lucina with 8 and Betty Abel with 5. The Americans, Azare Stevens with 10, Wilson with 4, and Kolya with 4. No plenty of time left in this, but uh, Mick, just think about the mental side of this now for the Americans. You know, this is a position they're not used to being in, playing from behind. What's the mindset for them now? Yeah, they just keep playing. They've got to keep playing. I mean, my only, like, I'll go back to the atmosphere, and it, it's changed. There's a, there's a, there's a big crowd in here. It's the temperature is probably eight, nine degrees higher than it was for any game in this tournament. Somebody turned off the AC. This is going to get nice, hot, and steamy in here. Well, Dangerfield gets it across half court for the USA. A block to block screen for Wilson. She finishes. Oh, yeah. And that's an excellent offensive timeout. The Americans come out and execute something and get exactly what they want. Yeah. The, the boys on the 19 team run a very, very similar offense. They just run that baseline screen. Wide open. Great hustle from Collier. She steals it. Dangerfield. Just great anticipation from Nafisha. Collier came from the backside of the zone press. Yeah, Kolosov Sky getting a pasting from coach uh, Don Scott there. Poor pass. And plenty of time, plenty of uh, opportunity to get that pass fired in. The Russians stay in their man to man defense. Dangerfield gets by Levchenko. Her floater in and out. Tipped up by Wilson. She can't hang on to it. Matty Ava does. Primova has to get it across the timeline. Any Americans who are watching us, it's eight seconds in the backcourt according to FIBA rules. Of course, it's a 24 second shot clock. Lucina takes a look at a three. That's off the mark. Asia Wilson's wide open down the floor. They can't find it. More ter terrific diagonal pass. Great vision, and Stevens lays it up and in. Yeah, that's poor transition defense for the Russians. Never got back, never even looked, like, looked interested in getting back. Good, re good recovery from the United States. Primova drops it to Musina. Her shot's no good. Musina gets the rebound. That's no good. Azari Stevens comes up with a long rebound. She puts it on the floor. Azari Stevens goes by Levchenko. She's going to go coast to coast. She misses the first one. Shovels it to Wilson, who lays it up and in. Well, Stevens with a crossover dribble against Levchenko. And Donskov calls timeout because you know why? Because you had Russian players at half court watching American players rebounding offensively down the other end. And the power of the USA comes back, and we've got an eight point lead, got to the two now. A great timeout by Coach Staley. We've got our team to regroup, and now it's a defensive timeout for the Americans. We're looking inside the Russian timeout. To look at some numbers, it's Kolosovskaya with 11, and Vadiye with seven rebounds. Look at that, Levchenko with four assists and three steals. So good numbers. Like we knew there'd be a mouth-watering matchup with the interior players, but of course the guard play here is so important. How the Russian guards are going to cope with the press? And Levchenko with three assists has played well so far. That has really been a factor, I don't think. What I've noticed right now is the United States have gone back man to man. Therefore. 
Russia now will isolate Vadieva low post. I don't think that's probably why Donskov wants to call this timeout because they've had this transitional play, 6-0 runs since the last timeout. And at no point has any of the guards spotted there's a man-to-man. -man. We need to isolate the uh, our best player in some sort of position where she could score. Going back to 1993, the breakup of the Soviet Union. These teams have met in this competition six times. The Russians have never won it. The Americans trying to win their sixth consecutive gold medal. The Russians trying to secure an upset into the high post of Vedieva. She kicks it out. That three is on the way and it's up and good. Back to back threes for Klimova. She can shoot it. You don't want to leave her open. I'm, and I'm not sure why you leave her open. It's the high post pass kills the United States zone. Here's the first sign of zone for the Russian, which is what we expected last night. Destiny Slocum in the game for the first time. But the Americans looking for an entry pass. Can't find one. Well, they haven't got a shooter on the wing. And I'm not sure what's going on. The gun. Slocum's on one side, opposite side to where the four other players were. So the Americans out of sync offensively. They're slow to get into their trap. And Collier almost got a steal. I don't think Levchenko realizes this. The United States have really just lost a little confidence in their trap. We're going to go back man to man here. And Vadieva's being guarded by Stevens. That'll be an interesting matchup. Who's the high low they're trying to get to? Sioma with a three. That's off to Mark. Collier with the rebound. Slocum comes back to get the outlet. Americans will try and unlock this 2-3 zone. Americans in their semi-final win were 0 for 10 from behind the three-point line. So, Mick, we thought we were going to see some, some stage tonight. Here it is. Stevens with the miss. Well, as already said, he's already 2 for 2 from the three-point line. Collier's jump shot. Yeah, Great jumper is good. Point. Step inside the three-point in that comfort zone for it. Stevens, the point of that press. Primo up. Turns it over. Stevens runs the lane and scores and gets it at one. And well, Stevens finishes the play on the turnover. It's a hard pass for her to get. And I've been impressed make with Stevens' uh, mobility, her soft hands. She catches difficult passes, and there she converts. I don't think the Russians realize that if you just got somebody just to dribble into the gaps of this press and get it to somebody ahead of you. Primova tried there, but she wasn't very adept at dribbling. Stevens leaves the end one on the table. The Americans get the rebound. And they have a chance now to get their noses in front. They trail by one. Wilson, she's sandwiched between Sioma and Betty Ava. Just a difficult pass for her to catch. No space. Nine offensive rebounds for the U.S. now. That's going to be a telling factor as this game wears on. Now, Levchenko's just got to really just go at this zone. USA had 27 offensive rebounds in their semi-final win against Spain. Kolosovskaya strikes the iron, and Wilson had it momentarily. Koyer comes up with it. Here's Slocum. That's just too hard to pass. And Nick, the guard play of the Americans has been Less than good, shall we say? Yeah, I'm not sure what she's doing, Slocum. She's got to get one side of the one side of the middle or the other. You don't get down the middle, and all of a sudden the passes have become two acute angles. See, there you go. It's that easy. Vadieva kicks to the corner. Ogun in for the first time. Levchenko goes to the teardrop shot. And I think good. It's that easy. You've got to just get dribbling into that lane and be bold and be brave. And it will open up. So the Russians stay in their even front 2-3 zone. And USA have got to get somebody in that high post. Somebody's got to occupy that high post. That's a good look pass. A back screen for Wilson. Moore set the back screen on the back of the zone. A huge space for, a for Wilson. Lob, but it was a bullet-like pass. But, yeah, That's good execution, isn't it? Five, 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 five. Well, the only thing I'd say is that, in, in all fairness, it's probably gone for about two or three sets of hands. Therefore, if you're gonna, it might be easy to pick off. You've got to get at least a little bit of uh, height and altitude on that pass. Well, here's Asia Wilson at the line. It's having a terrific tournament. Averages 16 points a game. Close to nine rebounds. I'm annoyed she missed. Looking through the record books yesterday, a 24 points from Collier was one of the top, uh, top 10 scores in this tournament over the years. 
But the players will very find it very difficult now to get the top uh, point score of the tournament because they're playing less games now. 158 is the top points production, and uh, I think Wilson's just broken 100 now in this in this game here. The seventh game for both of these teams. Americans in man-to-man -man defense. Slocum slides through a screen and walls up against Lovchenko. Ogun lets fly with a three, no good. Stevens paws the rebound and hangs on to it. Interesting though, Liam, the, the save in the low post play of Vadieva to the second half. Which is very canny work, means you can't go in a half time and talk about something you haven't experienced yet. Slocum on a skip pass, moves it on one more to the corner. Moore lets fly, her shot, no good. And Sioma. That's well, a tough call. Out of her hand. I thought Sioma lost it, but the referee a had a better, uh, better angle. Wilson put pressure on Sioma, Sioma definitely touched it last. Vadieva takes her first break of the game. I wonder if that'll be... The whole three and a half minutes, or she'll just get a minute's break. We'll see. We've got just over three minutes to play here in this first half. First, first time in the tournament, I'm sorry. No, the, go ahead. The USA have just taken the press off. It's now relaxed. Half court press, no pressure at all. Hogan shot, no good. Wilson tipped it to Slocum. She does her best curly kneel impersonation for a second or two. <laughs> now I'm dating myself. Moore, she attacks the zone, no good, too hard off the backboard. And that's Kolosovskaya with the easy two, she's got a Baker's dozen. Let's take another assist as well, she's having an outstanding game. That is textbook fast break too. Still the Americans, no one in the high post. There's a flash from Azare Stevens. This is better by the Americans. Wilson draws the foul and makes the dribble penetration of Nafisha Collier. Finds a little crease in the zone, attacks it on the dribble, and moves it on to Wilson. Yeah, the quick skip pass that uh, really caught the zone off uh, off balance and on the heels. Collier, beautiful penetration. I want to pass to Wilson. Now, this is Kolosovskaya with her third personal. She's the leading scorer for the Russians at 13. There is a substitute at the bench. It's Krimova. I can only imagine she's going to come in to spell. Daria Kolosovskaya. Wilson makes the second. In fact, makes them both. Says Asia Wilson, and it is indeed Kolosovskaya who comes out. And Mick, to answer your question, Vanieva just got a quick break. She's right back in. Minute 14 seconds for the uh, extendable number five, Vanieva. Look at the press now. It's just gone back to man to man. First time in the tournament. That'll be a psychological edge to the Russians. They'll take some confidence from that at halftime. Lepchenko uses the high ball screen of Vadieva. Spots up from the elbow. No good. Gets her own rebound. Shimmies through the lane. Slocum almost stole it. That shot hard. Americans contest. And look at Wilson and Vadieva go at it. Well, I talk about the strong hands of Vadieva. Mix tries to rip it out of... Asia Wilson's hands. You know, she doesn't get 20 rebounds in a game without having a nose for that ball, that's for sure. I'll tell you the one element about coming out of a press and going straight back into man-to-man -man now, Russia can control tempo a little easier. And that's how much ground you're giving up. I, I, I'd be tempted to stay in the press. There was elements that caused turnovers that made them throw these lateral passes, which against man-to-man -man they won't have to do now. Kolosovskaya checks back in for Russia with 50 to play. Offensive substitution. I think it should be out, given off a chance. And she is on the wing, she loves to operate from there. A little touch pass to Vadieva, can't convert. And there's some big bodies, and they compete for rebounds in there. Sioma knocks it out of bounds. I beg your pardon, that's Musina who knocks it out of bounds. The Americans come back. Surprising it cut us off Sky Route on that uh, end line out of bounds. Defensive sub, don't want to pick up that fourth now. And now she's at the back of the zone. The Americans attacker. There's the high post flash from Wilson. And it's going to be a foul on uh, Maria Vadieva, who just closes out and contests the shot. Beautiful skill work from Wilson, just a catch, turn, and shoot. So now, it's the second foul on Vadieva. Kolosovskaya stays in the game. And Wilson misses that free throw.
First one for two that trip does Wilson. Americans again stay in that man to man. They come out of the press. They trail by one. Pulls the sky. Picks up a dribble. It's tipped. Stevens ahead to Slocum. She misses. Stevens follows up, and it's another foul on Vadieva. The foul's from behind. Yeah, that's poor work from Kolosovsky. I'm not sure. Many <laughs> Levchenko needs to take more order on this Russian team. Slocum blows the layup just a little too strong, but Vadieva, beautiful work from Zure Stevens just following in. Well, Mick, here's something to think about. So Vadieva picks up her third foul. Kolosovsky with three. Well, Donskoy's going to get one of them out, that's for sure. Stevens, just the shooter's oh, roll on that is. shot. Desiree Stevens from Raleigh, North Carolina, chose to stay at home and play her collegiate basketball at Duke. Parade Magazine All-American, now representing her country here in Russia. Makes both. Oh, Americans get their noses in front now for the first time in the whole quarter. More. I beg your pardon, it's Collier who presses Kolosovskaya. She dribble penetrates and draws the foul. The U.S. are going to take a timeout here with a minute and two to go. Well, bizarrely enough, with America playing half court man to man now, and they've gone away from this trap, it, 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 it's always it favors the, U the, U the Russia. Because they will have this uh, array of offenses they will go to, they'll run and duck and dive. And eventually, Vadieva will get a lot of, plenty of touches in the second half of that low post, which the USA will have to come up with some answers for, because as good as she is, she is uh, tough to stop. Well, five of these Russians play for the same club, not far from here, the Spartak Vidnoi club. So, uh, Lucina, Vadieva, Levchenko, three starters play as club mates together. They'll have a good understanding when they get to their man sets. And the most of them are playing uh, up in the Super League, too. They're the top three teams in Russia. They have all the money. They take all the best players. They bring all the imports in. Spartak, who once were a very huge powerhouse in European basketball. Not as so much the, uh, the budget that they used to have, so they bring in these juniors. They've got a lot of kids, they young kids they grow, they bring up and they live in the dormitories over there. They go to school there. They get their uh, their basketball every day. It's a very, very good club for young talent, for sure. Here's one of those players now, Daria Kolosovskaya. She's a sure-handed from the free throw line. Misses that one. A nine of 13 coming into this game. As you said, just a solid shooter. This is both. Wilson with the rebound. Now the Americans with a chance to control the end of this half. With a minute left, they could get a two for one. Slocum guarded closely by Levchenko. Into the high post. Wilson goes at Vadieva, powers it up and in. That's intelligent from the Americans as they attack Vadieva with their three fouls. Wilson yeah. converts. And they got the switch out of the pick and roll because they knew Vadieva was not going to mark Wilson. Tough play. Slocum took a lot of minutes from Coach Staley. Vadieva gets deep, right-handed jump hook, no good. Lucina with the rebound. Stolen. It's Collier with the steal to Slocum. Moore with the trainer. Oh, terrific passing by the Americans. Finished off by Collier. Oh, great unselfish play by Team USA. And just what this crowd didn't want to finish off the halftime. Finish the uh, first half off. Andy Aver is just lacking confidence. Those three fouls just knocked it out of him. Well, Slocum gets called for trying to fight through a screen too aggressively. I think it was a nothing call, cool, be honest with you. Yeah, it didn't really affect play. The Russians now will have three seconds to try and score. As we bring this first half to a close, the Americans have cut themselves in front by five. Lucina, she's going to let fly with a three. It's deflected by Wilson. Just, just just enough does Asia Wilson to put the shot off. So 
At the end of the first half of play, the Americans, who were down as many as eight, leave the Russians by five. It's the defending champion Americans 39, for the Russians 34. As you look at some numbers, Mick, anything jump out at you? Well, just for the fact that USA, as big as they are, as good as they are inside, still not shooting close to 50%. In Saudi Arabia, just two made baskets away from it. The rebounds there for a USA 10 offensive. Russia responded with their own eight offensive rebounds, so fairly even. Assists, the, 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 the interplay between the USA on the break has been inspirational, and that's what they love to do, get out on the break, run it, move it around, and get layups. 10 and 9 turnovers respectively for the two teams. We'll get a look at some of the scoring. There is uh, Daria Kolosovskaya for Russia with 13. Azure Stevens with 16. Yesterday, Mick, it was Collier who stepped up and did the scoring for the Americans with 24. Today, it's uh, Azure Stevens. Yeah, she's had double figures in most games, Azure Stevens. I think she had double figures yesterday, too. I mean, she's a, a force to be reckoned with, that's for sure. And I think those two threes that she got early in the game definitely set her down. And uh, she's been uh, very, very, a big obstacle for Russia to deal with. We'll take a 10 minute break and come back and join us for continuing coverage of the FIBA Under 19 Women's World Championships of Basketball.
Welcome back to Chekhov, Russia. Welcome back to coverage of the FIBA Under-19 World Championships of Basketball for Women. You're just joining us, welcome. If you were with us in the first half, welcome back. There's your score, the USA lead by five at halftime by a score of 39 to 34. The Americans were down by as many as eight points in the second quarter, clawed their way back to lead by five. Team USA paced on offense by Azare Stevens with 16. Asia Wilson with 14. The Russians with defend Daria Polosovskaya with 13. Cena with eight. Their star, number five, Maria Vadieva, has been quiet with five. We'll see what sort of attitude she brings to the floor here at the start of the second half. Gold medal game for all the marbles between the USA and Russia. Americans come out with Destiny Slocum at the point. Mariah Moore, Nafisa Collier, Azare Stevens, and Asia Wilson. Mick, it is a strong and big lineup for the Americans. As you started, except for Slocum, isn't it? Slocum played a great last five or six minutes. And yeah, I think you said at halftime, um, Coach Stady went through three point guards first half. Couldn't get comfortable either one of them, but Slocum seems to be the best option. There's a travel by Wilson. Straight away, they're trying to draw this fourth foul out of Maria Vadieva as uh, Wilson goes head to head with it. The Russians come out with Levchenko, Kolosovskaya, Vadieva, Musina. And Oven is the fifth. Good ball movement to free up Kolosovskaya. She left her shot from the baseline short. Slocum comes up with the rebound, looking for a pass. Finds Stevens on the baseline. Her shot is no good. Great hustle by Collier. Americans extend pressure. Now it's numbers for Russia. It's a three on one. Vadieva, left handed shot's good. Oh, how good is that? How good is that? Just took her time, extended her arms so up, just dropped it over Stevens. Destiny Slocum, a little story, Mick, I'm not sure if you've heard this, I spoke to the media rep from Team USA, Slocum did not go through any of the preparations, wasn't with the team in Colorado Springs or in Spain for their preseason or pre-tournament tournament, arrived here in Moscow an hour before their first game started. Welcome to the team. She looks settled in now, that was a beautiful play there for uh, another two for Asia, Wilson 16. Ties uh, Stevens is 16 for high at the game. Logan hands off to Levchenko. Slocum gets around the screen. Musina checks the seams. Let's fly. No good. Moore with the rebound. The Americans have got numbers. Wilson. Now this looks like it could have been a clean steal from Levchenko. Mick, I want to see this again. The pickpocket in the house. Look at this. This is beautiful work from Levchenko. Runs right underneath her. Maybe a hand on the wrist, but she turns to the referee and says, yeah, that was pretty clean, ref. So when Slocum went to the tryouts, Mick, she wasn't even selected as an alternate. Americans went through their alternates through some injuries. And they had to call on Slocum and said, hey, we're in Moscow. Can you get here? Welcome to the tournament, Destiny Slocum. Well, she got through the airport on her own. <laughs> exactly. Goodness me. We know how hard that was. Wilson gets the shooter's roll, makes both. Second free throw has bounced up and bounced back in again. You know, Russia aren't hitting anything right now. That will come later in the game. So it's got to be patient. Look at the defense from Slocum on Levchenko. They know Levchenko's the only real true point guard they've got. Slocum working very hard on defense. Slides across the top of the screen. And then just a little bit too much pressure. She caused... There's the intelligence of Levchenko, she just drew that foul and Slocum just a little over exuberant. She knew full well she's breathing down her neck, if I just hesitate, I'll draw the foul. It is the second foul on Destiny Slocum, the possession for the Russians. And the partisan crowd here find their voices as they try to get behind their team. Got a technical flaw here as the officials come to the scorer's table. I think the game clock's gone from the 24 second clock. The lights have gone out. I think that's what they've, uh, somebody's kicked a wire somewhere. Above the uh, shot clock, you see they're looking up to the shot clock. If that's the problem, the shot clock should have the shot clock numbers, I think, as well as the game clock. But maybe. 
referees have sorted out. The shot clock and game clock are right on top of the backboard for the players to see. It is quite hard, though. The green lighting isn't very bright. Slavchenko on the wing. A little sweep move. Gets deep. And Cena lost the pass. Look how the Americans run their lanes, but Stevens can't get it out quick enough. Now Stevens puts it on the floor. Slocum comes back to get it. Staley calls the play from the sideline for the Americans. Shot clock at eight. Slocum spots up. No good. Collier comes up with a rebound, and Vadieva just takes it away from her. The strong hands of Maria Vadieva. Polovskaya on a terrific pass down the floor by Levchenko. Makes the baby J. Well, for all of uh, Coach Staley's uh, gesturing to run an offense, the offense wasn't very good. And straight down the other end, Russia score. Wilson with a show and go. She goes by Vadieva, but doesn't have the composure to finish. Not too far away from that fourth foul, that's for sure. Musina takes a look at a three. Get it! Russia Musina with a three. That brings Russia to it in two. That's called momentum right there. Twice they've gone after this extra foul on Vadieva. Come up short. Now they need some energy because they've uh, slowed down the U.S. Koya tries to respond with a three of her own, and she does. I think it part is Maria Moore. That is just phenomenal play. There was no speed about that offense at all. Gets to the corner and just drills it. Polosovskaya on the wing calls the play. Lachenko finds space behind Betty Avis screen, and she rattles on the three of her own. And Slocum goes under the pick and roll and pays the heavy, heavy price. She's playing as good as he's playing. She's just got to smarten up a bit. Slocum goes by Lepchenko. Did she turn it over? She did. Coach Taylor just trying to tell her to calm down a little bit. I'll tell you, you know, you've got Aja Wilson needs the ball. Full stop. I mean, when you get her in the high or the low, she needs the ball. So now Russia with a chance to tie or go ahead. This trip down the floor. Sioma, go back door to Levchenko. Good defense by Collier. Slocum trying to find a pass. She does find Collier. Collier moves it on to Wilson. She can't convert. Collier with the rebound. She'll give it to Stevens, who moves it on. A little bit too unselfish. Well, the American per, uh, interior players met Collier, Stevens, and Wilson just sharing the basketball. Just one too many for the Russians, didn't it? One too many. Good work from Ogan here. I think she got down, gave up the foul, but it was uh, the ball was in uh, Wilson's hands, and she was quite happy to get down and dirty and get after it. Slocum out. I thought uh, she played very well, Destiny Slocum. Gabby Ortiz comes in. Ortiz was open on a backdoor cut. Stevens couldn't see her. Shot clock. Now at seven, into Wilson, who powers it up over Vadieva. Well, we talked last night about who was the uh, best player in the world. Well, Slocum, I'm sorry, uh, good move. Wilson's getting the better of it tonight, but what a move from Kolosovskaya. Finishes with the left hand on the drive. Right now, she's keeping the Russians in it. She's got 17. And leading all scorers for the team in white. Wilson pops open on the baseline all by herself. A little scoop shot's good. Good composure from Asia Wilson. I'm gonna yeah, say I know you like that. That's a travel, I know. The super move. Pump fake, step through. It's all gone quiet. Look at this. This is the post that they don't want. Betty Abel wants the ball, gets it, just didn't convert. Levchenko lets fly. It's good! Oh, Kasanya Levchenko emotes! She's got Russia within one. Well, the people step forward, you don't expect to. And Gabby Ortiz has got a hands full right now. Offensively and defense. He's got to come up with a good offense here. Wilson needs the ball again. Stevens. Stevens is going to use a ball screen from Wilson. Stevens. Strong to the basket. And Stevens, what an asset she is, Nick, with her length and mobility to put it on the floor. Yeah, Russia need to go zone. They need to change it up. Get his zone. There's too many uh, leaky holes because. Vadieva can't give up that extra foul. Zone, of course, could allow Vadieva to protect her a little bit. Now she finds herself in a trap. 
Shioma fly. Shioma shot rims out. And Moore with the rebound. She'll give it ahead to Wilson. Wilson off the mark. Gabby Ortiz. She can't come up with it. There's four Americans down the floor. Just one back. But Stevens on defense. Here comes Levchenko. Oh, behind the back. Kolosovskaya got it. Oh, the play by Kasseny Levchenko. Oh, what a time to do it. Raise the crowd up at your whole sorts of motion. Oh, my heavens. Wilson looks eyeball to eyeball with Vadieva. The left hand shot won't go. Stevens tips it. She can't convert. And then commits a foul. There's a foul wait to happen somewhere under that basket. So much contact. And the referees calm it down a bit. Stevens picks up uh, second foul. Now both coaches go to their benches. Chatrice White and Ali Patberg will check in. Patberg getting her first minutes in this game. The Russians come in with Maiga and Primova. Wilson takes a break too. It's an important uh, passage here for the United States. Got to keep the nose in front for Wilson on the bench. Radieva's out for the Russians. Patberg trying to guard Kolosovskaya. Well, who touched it last? Great defense. It's the Fischer Collier who tips it. That must be the fourth cross-court pass, lateral pass they've tried to make today, Russia, and every time it's been under pressure. Ortiz walks it across the midcourt stripe. Trying to find a pass. Stevens looking down at White. Oh, nice pass to Collier. Just got buried under the basket. White. Comes up with it and powers it up and in. Patrice White draws the foul. Well, she's just been uh, dynamite. Dynamite on the backboards for America. Look, uses a lot of space in there. Moves defenders around. Trying to look for a numbers as far as uh, rebounds are concerned for White. Third rebound of the game, but it seems a lot more. White knocks down the... First free throw. Two points she has. But, uh, I think a, a minute's been very valuable. Real scrapper in there. Gets the dirty work done. This is a young lady from Nebraska, which is American football country. She'll know about dirty work, that's for sure. Shelby, Nebraska. Lachenko in the wing for Russia. Stilman now is going to try and Make something happen. Moves it on to Krimova. Darts to the basket. A pass intended for Mike. A little too strong, and it's a turnover for Russia. Just lost their way a little bit, the Russians. And Americans 2 16 to go. Vadieva straight back in. And that's good coaching from uh, Dmitry Donskov. Doesn't want to lose any momentum here. It's an important two minutes for the uh, United States out. Maybe get some daylight here. Eight point lead going to this uh, fourth period. Well, they'll suit them fine. There's Pat Berg with the ball for the Americans. Inside to White. White, a little Sigma move. That's a good move by Chatrice White. She just ran into a girl called Maria Vadieva. I've been, I've been trying to focalize that ball onto uh, Stevens right now. Stevens matched up with Sioma. Shot clock at five for the Americans. Pat Berg lets fly. No good. He had to shoot it. Shot clock running down. Still with the rebound for Russia. Sioma goes at Stevens on the dribble drive. And draws a oh, foul on Patrice White. Could have had two or three fouls the same play. I thought Stevens got a first. Yeah, it is against White. You're right there. White coming from the help side. Sioma is such an agile player. Shows the three pointer. Gets that ball down so quickly out of her hands onto the floor. Referees love that to see that when they haven't got to make a decision about whether it should travel or not. Tatiana Sioma plays for the Dinamo Kursk club. First points tonight, 9 of 11 coming in. Tenth three pointer made there in the tournament. She's a member of that uh, squad, the Russian squad that won the European gold last summer in Portugal. What an experience for these players, Mick, to play in front of a home audience. It must be a 
Well, something they'll never forget. Lauren Cox now into the Americans. She gets her first touch. And she's fouled from behind. Oh, great defense from Levchenko. Gabby Ortiz wants to run the offense on the sideline. And Levchenko's just not going to let her back into the middle. A shame they didn't try and front the low post there, just to put a bit more pressure on their rusher. There's a foul from behind in the low post. Patberg was open, didn't get it. Collier spots up. That shot's no good. And Patberg hustles to the rebound. She gets called for the foul. Well, if you're going to get your minutes in the game, Ali Patberg knows full well. All she's got to do is throw a body around, get involved. It's the fourth team foul for the Americans, so no shots yet for... Team Russia. Team Russia, a chance here now to get their noses in front. They trail by one. Patrice White battling for position with Betty Ava. Betty Ava lost it. Uh, they change this one up, yeah. Good referee, and the referees confer. Tipped out of bounds by an American hand, and so 11 seconds on the shot clock. You know, not, not one complaint from the Americans either. They, they knew full well. And I say, I'll go back to it. The players usually get a good idea what's happened out there. Carlos Oskaya curls, moves it on one more. Baseline jump shot by Sioma, too strong. Beautiful box out from Chatrice White, just moves. Maddie Aver out of the off rebounding position. Ortiz. Dogged by Levchenko. White's going to try her hand from distance, that's short. Ortiz to Patberg, who steps through and missed the layup. White with the rebound. Brings it back out wisely to Ortiz, who resets. Good still, he calls the play. And Chatrice White, here's a little bit of coach speak for you, Mick. You've heard this from me many times. You catch the ball with your eyes, you got to see the pass coming. White didn't even see it. She thought she was open, but able to see that ball. So last, I'm not sure who she's aiming for. 20 seconds of the third quarter of play in this under-19 world gold medal game. Betty Ava. Shot off the mark by Kuklinova. And now the Americans with seconds left. Katberg, Katberg to Ortiz. White. Got it! Chatrice White with a three at the end of the third quarter. And that puts the Americans up four. What a huge shot. And Betty Ava was breathing down her neck. That is incredible. It's a game changer right there. Oh, my heavens. I thought Ortiz was going to shoot it herself, but she... That's faith in her teammate. White had just missed the last shot badly. There's some confidence from the American. And there's your score at the end of three quarters. It's the USA 57 and Russia 53. It has been one heck of a ball game so far. Yeah, look at the stats too. USA under 40%. Russia just creeping up to 50%. Seven three pointers. I, I feel that's a big, the biggest key of this game is how well the Russians shoot. Once there's a double team on Vadieva, and she kicks out because that's all. Every time she touches it low post, a double team goes right at it, and it's long and tall. Therefore, when the kick out comes, you're going to have open shots. Can Russia sustain the pressure? Handle that though, those open Jays. Both teams with 16 assists each, showing some good team basketball. As you see some highlights from action throughout this game. Let's hope we see that behind the back pass from Levchenko again. That was a beauty. Mick, we talked about it off air, you know, uh, at dinner last night. That's how sad we are. We talk about basketball at dinner. We fully expected to see a zone from the Russians. The Americans shot 0 for 10 from behind the arc against Spain. The Russians have come out and just played man-to-man -man defense throughout. Yeah, I just think that the first half when they showed it, Donskov, I just think lacks confidence in it because the ball move from the United States was outstanding. They didn't need to shoot threes. They were getting uh, backdoor cuts, backdoor passes. Little uh, penetrations in between the seams. And uh, Asia Wilson will come back into the game here. Well, we talked about the time she's going to be on the bench. I think she left when the U.S. were up by one. They're up by four now. It'll be Russia's ball. They'll come out with uh, Kolosovskaya, Levchenko, Musina, Vadieva, and Ogun. The Americans have got Dangerfield, Patford, Wilson, Stevens, and more. A shot by Lucina off the mark. 
the length of Vadieva gets the rebound. Lachenko is so quick. Yeah, he rejected the screen, went the other way. Uh, Dangerfield's got one eye on that screen coming to a left there for you. You're caught off balance. It's, it's tough to defend big time, and then there's no help back there either. Pass intended for Vadia, but gets there in the end. Left handed hook, no good. She stays after it. A determined effort by the number five for Russia. Kolosovskaya. That's too strong. That will be the story of the night. Open Jays, because they're all going to bump down on Vadieva. Dangerfield kicks. Moore checks the seams, lets it go. Got it! Inside out basketball by the Americans. And as quick as that, the Russians want a timeout. Oh, that's the difference in there. One open Jay down one end. Response from Collier down the other end. And yeah, you're right. Uh, the TO for Donskov. Dmitry Donskov there, Liam, he's got his hands full now, seven points, that's the biggest lead for the U.S., I think. Oh my word, how well they played. Three-point shooting for the U.S. Now stands at five for 11, that's pretty good going. In fact, their three-point shooting is 45%, their two-point shooting is 37%. You wouldn't so, expect that ahead of time, would you, coming into this game? Looking at last night's game, no, you're right, that's exactly right. This is a coach's nightmare. You come out of the huddle at the end of the third quarter, you, you give your team some instructions, and then you got to burn a timeout in the first 40 seconds of the fourth quarter. It just kills momentum. I think he won't be too upset with that. He won't want to call another one, that's for sure, but they need to come back and respond quickly here, Russia. The Russians have two timeouts remaining. The Americans have their full complement of three. Three on the way, no good by Musina. And it's the Russians, Mick, who are struggling from behind the rainbow. Musina is just uh, two for, I beg your pardon, one for five from behind the arc. Well, they're going to get their looks. They will get their looks because the, the high-low option is the zone for Russia. Three-two zone, three at the top, two at the back. Surprising zone for a team that doesn't particularly shoot it well, although today they are. Wilson finds a crease. She is stopped by Mucina. Here comes Vadieva. Vadieva. Hogan lost it momentarily. Rises over Wilson. Stevens with the rebound. Makes a cardinal sin and saves it in her own basket and pays the penalty. Beautiful work. Beautiful work for Russia. Unlucky for Stevens. Did everything right. Box out. Fumbled the ball eventually. There's one miss against the zone. The zone's got a big hole in the high post. Asia Wilson needs just need to get to that high post. Stevens. See the mismatch down low, the isolation down low they're looking for. There's a screen, and I don't agree with this, Meg. I think this is a good screen. It's only because Lucina ends up on her backside that they call this. I don't think Stevens moves. We're going to look at it in the instant replay. I, I think that's as good a screen as you can set. Wow. The theatrical ending was the uh, call the referee's eye. Stevens got three fouls. Not necessarily his panic to take her out, but Chatrice White is a good substitution for her. Lucina. She puts it on the floor, and Wilson blocks it with both hands. Yeah, she he just lost a feet at the last minute. She slipped, tripped, I'm not sure. I thought she was going to sky on that one. Got no elevation. I think he just stepped on uh, Wilson's leg. White really leaning on Vadieva to get her out of the blocks. Levchenko going to have to deal now. Shot clock at three. Levchenko lets it go. Oh, a little bit of offense by accident. It's Levchenko with a deuce as the shot clock is running down. Turns around to the bench and doesn't celebrate because she knew full well. I think she just got upset because the shot clock was running down. She didn't know what about it. 
into the baseline. Great pass to Wilson. And she is fouled. It's, it's, a, tough, it's a good a excuse call. by the Americans to find Wilson along the well, he runs the same on the baseline. The baseline screen. It, it opens up on against the zone, against man to man at work anywhere. But it's a tough, tough call. I thought there's. Uh, you've seen him play good defense there. Here's your Wilson at the line. Seven of nine now. Having a good night. Again, the commentators curse. But Moore comes up with the rebound. Into that baseline again. Wilson powers it up and scores that's over Vadieva. That's just tough. That's just tough. Used the body, got the strength over Vadieva. And both Vadieva's not stronger, not weak herself. It's a matchup that we've relished for the last 24 hours and hasn't failed to impress. Here's Levchenko. She'll step back from behind a three point line. It's nothing but nylon. Ksenia Levchenko with a three. Again, defense goes under. Levchenko's been shooting hot all night. You know, sometimes if you're going to beat a team like the U.S., it's better to beat them coming from behind. Sometimes more difficult to be in the lead and win. Wilson flashes to the ball. That is a pass to Chatrice White, who lays it up and in, big to big. Oh, what, a, what a game she's having. Three-pointer to finish the quarter, and then a two there. Beautiful pass from Wilson. Dangerfield gets across the top of the screen. Again across the top of the screen. It's a kick to Mussina. She's going to let it fly. It's good! Oh, the Russians with back-to-back -back threes! You're going to get wide open, Jays. Two-point game now. USA, I think the USA are three stops away from being commanding position, but they cannot get those stops. Wilson flashes to the high post. Has to step out of the, the lane to get it. Spins, extends. What an accomplished finish by Asia Wilson. 27. 27 huge ones. As the Naismith High School Player of the Year was Wilson. She won a gold medal with this team back in 2013. She was very young indeed. Here's Ogun. Musina, can she make another? That's too strong. But Levchenko hustles. We've got a foul in there. This is against... Uh, it's on Ogun. Ogun, yeah. Liam, the record for any player in an under-19 championship wearing a USA shirt, 28 points. And Wilson's on 27. Who holds the record, do we know? Alana Beard against Russia, 2001. And Jantel, three players, Wiggins, Candice Wiggins, Jantel Lavender, and Alana Beard. The last one being in 07, 28 points, three players. That's going to get broken. burn another timeout. Mick, uh, we might have been cut off just by the commercial break there. Again, Wilson on 27 points is very close to setting a new record yep. at these championships. Three players ahead of it. 28 points is the record. Alana Beard, John Tell Lavender, Candice Wiggins in 01, 07, and 05. One of those being against Russia back in 2001. Of course, the record for made field goals is 11 because obviously those players would hold that record and uh, Wilson has 10 now. The record's for the most number of shots taken, 20. She's one away from that. Dinah Tarazzi holds that record, by the way, 20 shots. Wow. She obviously needed, she's an outside player. She obviously needed to take a lot more. Do you sleep at night? Man, you're impressive. you got your finger on the pulse. Just reading the stats. <laughs> Just reading the stats. So we'll see if Wilson can indeed surpass that record. It's possession to the Americans. Russia come out in it looks to be man-to-man -man defense. It is. Hackberg. In the game. Into the low post. Wilson finds space. And draws the foul. And that's for the chance to set the new mark. Same offense. That baseline screen. They're going to keep milking it to Wilson. It's a good way of running. Uh, you know, a simple play of getting into the low post. But uh, moving the defense around beforehand. And 
Wilson misses the first free throw. I've been impressed, Nick, with the depth of the Americans. You know, everybody's got involved. Slocum's had a good game. Dangerfield's played steady. Patrice White provides terrific minutes for the bigs. 8 of 12 now. Adrian Wilson from the free throw line. He's just uh, single-handedly getting this whole team on a back and saying, come on, follow me, girls, follow me. The gold medal's at the end of this trail. He already has one gold medal, does Wilson. And these championships were in Lithuania two years ago. Oh, great cut. This is unfortunate, Mick, because it was a great deep basket cut by Raisa Musina. I'm not entirely sure she did travel, to be honest. But it's academic now. It's a turnover. It's a huge offense. Huge offense for the United States, Ryan. They're going to go milk it again. There it is. comes. Danger field to White. She's going to get caught for three seconds. She is. What on earth are you doing in this, Chatrice White? Get out of the lane, my goodness me. Make space for for the franchise. Make space for Wilson. That's 28 now. The Russians trail by five. Important trip down the floor for them. As Nafisha Collier comes to the substitute bench in front of us. Lovchenko in a double team. Kolosovskaya is wide open. Oh, terrific pass to Valieva, who lays it up and in. What a play. What a play. Messina for two. Sioma was just uh, whipped it off her hands. Oh, I beg your pardon, it's Messina with the yeah, bucket. Yeah, Valieva's out. Giving her a break. More to White. Uh, White. Oh, oh, now she's showing you what she's doing in the middle, coach. Oh, she says, I can finish in here. I got left. I got left. Beautiful. What a game. Lovchenko, who changed speed. She'll step back and shoot it. That's no good. Dangerfield tips it to White, gets it back. They could slow this game down on USA. Dangerfield to Wilson, who scores. Oh, yeah. And now the Americans starting to stamp their authority on this one. They lead by seven. Russia, I've got one timeout left. That's why there was no timeout call there, because you felt it was a time to do it. Andy Ava, you ought to be coming back into this game soon. Kolos of Sky, can she get herself going? She's just earned herself. Not yet a trip to the line. The Americans with just three team fouls. So the end line ball for Russia. Here she comes. Just waiting for the nod. She sprinted to the bench. Vadieva comes in to spell Lucina. Cena with 16 points leaves the Russians. No, I beg your pardon, it's Kolos of Sky with 19. Here she is on the baseline. Shot no good. Mariah Moore with the rebound. Again, Chetrice White doing the dirty work. Keaton Vadieva off the left, off the boards. Just a beautiful box out. Textbook. Dangerfield draws the foul. Yeah, nothing going the Russians way right now. Good work from Levchenko. Just reached at the last minute. Two shots for Crystal Dangerfield. Yet, yet to score in the game. Dangerfield still in high school at uh, Murfreesboro High School in Tennessee. She'll be heading to UConn. Permitted, but uh, still has to get her high school diploma. This is the first free throw. Makes the second. Coach Daly wants a timeout to talk things over for the Americans. She burns her first. U.S. lead by eight. That's a tough comeback right now. I just think that's just uh, a mountain that might be too tough for this team to, to get over. 80 points, I think, will win this, Liam. United States, seven points in three minutes. That means the Russians have to score 15 in three minutes. Americans have quietened the crowd for the most part. Uh, what a great atmosphere it's been here. Look around the arena, not too many empty places. Stay with us at the conclusion of this game for the presentation of awards. See who wins the All-Star Five. The Americans very close to winning their sixth consecutive gold medal of these under-19 World Championships. 2005 when this tournament adopted its two-year format. It's played every two years. 
They are 42 and 2. Only two teams have beat them. I, I know this only because I've checked it out. Any idea who the two teams are who beat the Americans along the way? Yeah, I do. It's Spain, and uh, the next one will come to me in a minute. You're um, right, it is Spain. That's one, yep. Uh, I'm going to guess I'll give, what, Canada. What? Canada. Unbelievable. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Spain in 09 won the first group game against the USA, and then saw the USA in the finals. Tell me the last thing. When was the last time a USA team lost a final at junior level? That's a good question. I'm gonna yeah. have to... And that's how good the United States domination has been over the years. Here's Lepchenko, important possession here. A skip pass intended for Kolosovskaya was short. Collier to danger field, finishes! And the Americans lead by 10. That could be the nail in the coffin again. The lateral cross-court pass picked off with ease. Sioma with a three. Oh, Sioma at least With a timely three to keep the Russians in touch. There's no quit in this team. Trail by seven. Dangerfield now with a mismatch against Badieva. Settles for a jump shot. Sion with a rebound. Surprised Aja Wilson didn't get a touch. Badieva is open going down the floor and she scores it. Well, the Russians have still got life. And poor clock management from the USA. They've got to get Wilson the ball. She's the only one that's going to dominate inside. Wilson has 30 points. White can't get it. They're not even on Wilson's side of the floor right no, now. No, not even looking. White with five seconds to Collier. Tough shot. It falls. We're on the feet. Collier wills it in. Beautiful backdoor cut from, Will, uh, from Collier. Levchenko to Kolosovskaya. That's off the mark. Whoa. That would have got the fans on their feet. Had that dropped. Now you milk the time. Milk the clock. Take your time. Pass deflected. Coyer dives in the floor after it. Who's got it? Wow. It's a jump ball. Very surprised. The Russians. Unlucky for the Russians because there may be a foul as Krimova went to the floor. Here's the ball on the floor. That, should, that could have been a foul by Krimova, to be honest with you. The Americans have four seconds to make something happen at the end of the shot clock. Into Wilson. A terrific execution. Wilson just couldn't finish. Ready, aim. Can she shoot threes? Oh, great hustle by Sioma. Well, he's got a timeout. Russian coach, coach has timeout. timeout. Americans have two. He might as well take it now. He wants it for an offense in a minute. Wants a score maybe or a turnover. Collier. She stripped. Comes up with it again. Dives down the lane and oh, shot is blocked. Staley wants a timeout for the Americans. With 33 seconds left, the Americans lead by seven. I think they've got one hand on the gold medal. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. They, to be honest with you, Liam, they don't even need to shoot this ball. Even if they just get it in bounds and run the clock 10 seconds, takes 10 off 23, seven points in 23 seconds for the Russians. You've got a timeout to advance the ball just in case they score a three. You don't want is a quick shot here and... Uh, provide seconds for the Russians to utilize later in the game. First Taylor drawing something up here. I can use those 10 seconds. Even if you get the ball in and don't take a shot, 10 seconds, shot clock goes off, fine. You get your defense back and reorganize. You take a shot and miss it, there's every chance of transition. I'm just looking at the five that Coach says to stay with, and she's going to stay with White. That surprises me a little bit. No disrespect to White, but you might bring in a Somebody who's a little bit uh, quicker, as the Russians are going to, no doubt, try to put some pressure here. Maybe bring an extra guard. You've got the whole white family. I know I'm going to get dialing your number right now. Listen, she's done a very, very good job at what she's good at. But right now you got a team that might need an extra, extra guard on the floor. Execution was pretty good. 
The last pass just off the mark. Now turn right the coach. Now what do we run? <laughs> well, there's that timeout gone. <laughs> the long pass to Wilson. White, her shot deflected by Vadieva. The U.S. should still have that. I thought That's it was it, deflected it by Vadieva. It was indeed. Nobody's complaining. Oh, yeah, White is complaining, but she might be the sole voice out there. It's right in front of us. We had a good look at it. So the Russians will burn their last time out. This will advance the ball into their front court for any Americans who are watching and getting used to the international rules. This will allow... But this game's just about done. You... Uh, Nothing stupid defensively to win for the United States. Don't do anything, don't risk anything. Just play the three-point line. Keep any penetration down to a minimum. And then he scored. Coach Staley should call timeout anyway. The U.S. have uh, a foul to give. They can afford the foul, and the shooter won't go to the line. The U.S. with one timeout left. If you're Russia, Mick, are you looking for a three here? Will you settle for a quick two? Got to go three. I mean, you might. You, you got no choice here. Yeah, you might not get the ball again. So, and then you're looking for that three, a score, and then a quick press. For the Russians. Americans can avoid that press with a timeout that'll advance it. You know me. I always like to keep a timeout in my pocket at the end. And Coach Staley's got one left. Let's see what the Russians have got for us. Kolosovsky to bring it in. Vadiev is going to go on the dribble drive. Just left it short. Dangerfield, the Russians need to foul. There it is. Vadieva fouls. And for Maria Vadieva, that's going to be her fifth foul. She will sadly check out with 11 points. But Mick, what a tournament it has been for her. And uh, we're very much anticipating. We won't know now for a few more minutes, but we're anticipating that she will be in the All-Star 5 of this tournament. Yeah, and you know what, Liam, I think it confirms too, you know, we got two players here. I think Asia Wilson has got a slight edge on Vadieva, maybe a bit more experience, maybe a couple of years of experience on her too, she's two years older. But uh, two of the best players in the world, and maybe this game has showed that uh, Wilson's probably got a little more in a locker than Vadieva, but uh, two players to watch out for the future. They're both playing with older players. And Slavchenko's trying to get a three off. No good. Dangerfield comes up with a loose ball, and the Russians are going to give up the ghost. And so the United States will celebrate a sixth consecutive gold medal at the FIBA Under-19 Women's World Championships. There's some American fans in the audience showing the colors. But let's give credit to the Russians who really make the only team who pushed the Americans in this tournament. There's your final score. It's USA 78 that retain their title, and Russia, the silver medalist, 70. Certainly, the, the Americans, when they go back to the hotel tonight, make will know they have been in the game. All credit to a spirited and disciplined performance by the Russian team. You now you take that three-pointer before the end of the third period from Shetris White that turned it into a five-point game. Well, that's uh, little game changes because in an eight-point game like that, it's so so key. But uh, fully, fully deserve it. I mean, what a performance from Asia Wilson! 30 points, and now holds the record for the number of points take uh, points scored in any Under-19 World Championship wearing an American shirt. Azare Stevens with 18, Collier with 10, Kolovskaya with 19. She's putting a claim in maybe to be an All-Tournament selection, All-Star five. Vadieva, 13 boards to go to 11 points. You can see they're bringing out uh, the hardware, bringing out the medals and the podiums. So stay with us as we bring the medal, the medal ceremony to you. The Russians will claim silver. They'll add that to their trophy cabinet. They have two silvers already as Russia and two golds as the USSR. See it smiles all around for Team USA. Getting a look at some highlights. This probably will wrap things up as far as the basketball action goes. 
and the Russian fans right now getting behind their teenagers. There are two world championships for juniors, the under-17 worlds, and the under-19 worlds. And certainly here at this age group for the women, they have dominated now for the last decade. Americans started their campaign with a training camp in the altitude of the mountains in Colorado and Colorado Springs at the U.S. Olympic Training Center. They spent a week together there. Players told me it was two a days. And then they played the American Pan Am Games team, which is made of older collegians. And these are all teenagers, of course, who are high school students or freshmen in college. And the teenagers won one of those two games. That is certainly a source of uh, I'm not surprised. Some bragging rights. I, I, I'm, honest, I'm not surprised. You know, you've got some players in this team, Wilson, Stevens, but, uh, and Collier, for instance, three of the top players right now in, in U.S. college basketball back in the States. I, I am not surprised at all. You know, there were question marks about the guard play for the U.S. But, you know, when you look at all four of them that came into the game, Pat Bird, Slocum, um, Dangerfield, Ortiz, Ortiz, and Dangerfield. Dangerfield and Slocum were outstanding, I thought. And, she, and Dangerfield closed out that game in true style. Very, very uh, steady play from uh, all four of them. Americans can then, having completed their preseason training camp, went to play a friendly tournament in Murcia, Spain. They played Spain, Canada, and Australia, won those games. And they've run the table here on 7-0. They've been away from home now for the better part of a month by the time they get back to their homes in the USA. And there they are, the American women celebrating. You, know, Mick, you and I have talked about this already amongst ourselves, but despite this, this resurgence uh, or this decade of dominance, it hasn't always been easy for the Americans. The tournament stretches all the way back to 1985, was first played on American soil in Colorado Springs. USSR won that. For the first three tournaments, they lost to South Korea in every tournament. That, yeah, imagine that, yeah. And that wouldn't happen today. There'd be no chance that happened. So how did that happen back then? Because they were all college players back then, too. It wasn't really like you're taking high school players out. And Dawn Staley talked about the time she went in uh, 2001. No, maybe earlier 80, than that. 89. 89. Yeah. How her team was bad, but at least Leslie on the team. Certainly plenty of talent, and, and the Coach Staley herself was a three-time Olympic gold medal yeah, yeah, winner. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, your guess is as good as mine at why on earth they didn't do as well in the early years. The Soviet Union obviously dominated everything back then. But. Americans getting their house in order, so they came fifth in 85 and 89. The tournament was played every four years in those days. They came seventh in Bilbao, Spain, and Seoul, South Korea, seventh again. It wasn't until 97 when they touched gold in Brazil. Oh, one, they won the bronze in the Czech Republic, but since then, there's been nothing but gold for Team USA. Look at the Russian flag, which is ever present here in this arena. Chekhov has been our home for the last uh, week. It's uh, the city of about 60,000 people, in what they call the Moscow region, just south of will begin in Moscow just a proper. few moments. We invite teams to leave the court and move to the team entrance while we get everything ready. Дамы и господа, через несколько минут мы начнем церемонию награждения призера. The PA announcer here in the arena just just get the riff rough off. Уважаемые yeah, болельщики, давайте, давайте поддержим команды. Ваши аплодисменты. Давайте поддержим друг друга! USSR won this tournament the first uh, year in 85. As I mentioned, they won it again in 89. South Korea team that uh, you mentioned, Mick, they, they won a silver back in the inaugural tournament. Yeah, looking through those numbers, some strange teams that uh, ended up doing very well in the end of some of those tournaments. Actually, Soviet Union and Yugoslavia have, have, uh, don't exist anymore as proper countries, but South Korea's second, as you said. Uh, Zaire entered the 1993 tournament, and I don't think we've, uh, we've, we've, we've seen Zaire for a long, long time since. They don't exist as a country anymore, do they? 
remember, anyone who's new to this tournament, there are 16 teams who come here. They come from the five FIBA zones from around the world, Oceania, Africa, Europe, Asia, and the Americas all send representatives to this tournament. And some build, the tournament's build as seeing the superstars of tomorrow. And, uh, you know, Mickey and I have said over the last uh, couple of days, there's been a, a litany of very good players who've come through here. And four WNBA number one picks. Lauren Jackson, Australia in 2001. Dinah Tarassi in 2004. Maya Moore in 2011. Mika Mike, 2012. So we could very well be seeing some future pros here in front of us today. Yeah, there's been, uh, there's been some teams where they've just worn white note. Tamika Captions, another great WNBA player, was uh, one of the players that, by the by, it's, uh, it's been a real... Uh, and it's Wiggins, that team as well. Nikki Anasiki back in 2005. I think that team was, was uh, averaged 112 points a game. I think that's the biggest average in any USA team has put together. With uh, Crystal Langhorn, Candice Wiggins. Courtney Paris on that team, it was a real heavy hit team. Just waiting now for the team to come into the arena one by one to be called in. Just to see the teams that uh, have won this trophy, Czech Republic have won, won it once, Australia have won it once, so the Union twice. The USA obviously the uh, seventh time now they've won it. In the second place teams the USA have beaten the last six years. France won, Spain twice, Sweden, Serbia and Montenegro. And a lot of uh, varying European teams, it's usually a USA versus Europe matchup somewhere along the line. It's been a pathway to the Olympics for many players as well. Certainly something that these uh, young women can look forward to, presenting their country. The, uh, like the most prestigious basketball tournament in the world. It is now time for the closing ceremony of Just the 2015 closing ceremonies now. Under 19 Women's World Championship. Дамы и господа, мы начинаем церемонию награждения призеров первенства мира по баскетболу среди девушек до 19 лет. Приглашаем команды победительницы Австралия. The Russian. We're going to bring the Australians onto the floor first. They won the bronze medal earlier today. If you're with us, you see that game. Australia beat Spain. Here are the Russians. They come out to rapturous applause in front of their home fans. And uh, last but certainly not least, it's uh, Team USA, ready to receive their gold medal. We would like to ask the teams to remain standing behind the podium during the presentation of the individual awards. Мы просим участников команд оставаться за, за подиумом во время награждения лучших игроков. The teams are awards. We'll do the individual awards, the All-Star Five and the MVP of the tournament. My partner here has got a, he's handing me a note, I think. Is he, you have you selected your five, coach? Yeah. Okay, you confident? I'm uh, not too confident. No, I'll get four out of five right, I'm sure. Fifth one I'm not sure about. We'll see who it is. It is now time for the All-Star 5 Awards. And here it is, without further ado, the All-Star 5. The awards will be presented by FIBA President Horacio Muratore. It is Mr. Horacio Muratore, the FIBA President, who will come out. Present the awards. These All-Star Awards are presented by TISO. Coach Moratori, I'll be, I'll be partner Horacio Moratori just there waving to the players. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, here is the All-Star 5 of the 2015 FIBA Under-19 Women's World Championship. 
Встречайте лучшие игроки первенства. Нафиса Коллиер, номер 10, the USA. First selection, Нафиса Коллиер. 24 points in the semifinal win yesterday. 10 points today. Take a serious claim yesterday, I would suggest, Nick, with her strong performance in the semis. Yeah, it's, it's, she's solid, there's no doubt about it. Maybe Azura Stewart and Nafisa Colley were fine for that position, but uh, there's no doubt about it yet. I go with that 24 yesterday. And that performance herself put her in the top 10 of performances in terms of points per, scored. Daria Polovskaya. Yeah, she's a, she plays her basketball not far from here, so she's deserving too on the strength of her performance today. 19 points in a losing effort for the Russians. Alana Smith, number 12, Australia. Well, Alana Smith, who was a woman on a mission in the semi-five, big part of the bronze medal game today, had 11 points in the first quarter. Pleased for her, she didn't play to her capabilities in the semi-final loss last night to Russia. Just Maria one point and fouled out. No surprise here, it's Maria Badieva, the Russian center, the interior player. 11 points today, sadly fouled out in today's game. Asia Wilson. Number 40, the USA. Asia Wilson rounds out the All-Star 5. Wilson with 30 points, leading the Americans to the gold medal. It is her second gold medal. She was with this team in 2013 when they won in Lithuania. Uh, we would like to ask the players to line up for a team photo. So the young ladies will... Pause for the photograph, and they'll receive the applause from what is still a crowded auditorium here. All credit to the fans who've remained. And now it's time for the Tissot Award for the most valuable player of the championship. Пришло время наградить самого ценного игрока первенства мира по баскетболу девушек до 19 лет. But the most valuable player is Asia Wilson. Asia USA. Wilson, no surprise there. Mick, uh, did the selectors get the five just about right? Yes, no doubt about it. I think uh, Kolosovskaya was uh, a very good adding after the performance today. But Asia to Wilson, MVP, Vadieva, definitely. Asia Smith may Wilson. be a surprise, but there's no out now. Point guard out there, two guard, or maybe that maybe. Just uh, picking bones uh, at it, but uh, congratulations to all five, and especially to Asia Wilson. To walk back to their position on podium. Now the five will return return back to their teammates. It's now time so to at, present uh, the medals. You so watch. Now for the medal presentation. So Australia, bronze medalists step onto the platform to receive their bronze. The bronze medals are presented by Miss Yulia Anikeva, Russian Basketball Federation yes, uh, Yulia President. Anikeva, the Russian Basketball Federation President, will come out to uh, present the award Roman to the Australians. Tursko, Minister of Sports of Moscow Region. Minister Roman Prosko, the Minister of Sports from Moscow, will help with the uh, presentation. For Australia, it is their third bronze medal. They won it last year. Please give it a round of applause for the players of the team of Australia. They won it back in 1989 when these championships were held in Bilbao, Spain. They beat Czechoslovakia for the bronze in that year. A long journey home for the Australians on the road now for close to a month. Talia Tupea, number four. Mikhaila Pirini, number six. 
Alexander Shark, number seven. Well, Shark, what a terrific pick uh, out shot and a terrific bronze medal game today. Yeah, that's standing. Alex, Alex uh, Sharp was just uh, inspirational. I thought she had inspiration moments yesterday against the USA, but uh, it definitely carried over to today. And uh, the Australian team in general, I think, shook off that loss far better than the Spanish girls who came out in a storm and just held on and held on. Paul Goris. All smiles for Coach Paul Goris. So our congratulations to the Australians. What a great sporting tradition they have. And Basketball Australia Center of Excellence turns out a lot of young talented players. Remember to that team? Now the silver medalist. Under 19 Women's World Championship is the team of the Russian Federation. As you look at the Russian girls who will claim silver, there is Ksenia Lovchenko. The silver medals are presented by Yulia Anikeva, the president of the Russian Basketball Federation. Is Yulia Anikeva called to fight again? The president of the Russian Basketball Federation to present the silver medals. Юрий Нагорнев, заместитель министра спорта Российской Федерации. Please give a round of applause to the team of the Russian Federation. Dalia Kolosovka, number seven. The Russians now bow their heads to receive this silver. Nick, they, they are without doubt that the team that stretched the Americans the most. And, you know, they were leading at one stage by eight points in this game, and the Americans showed character and came back. What a turnaround. That was an important time out there for uh, head coach John Steady of the United States. 29-21, I think the score was. And in the blink of an eye, she had them out of there and chomping at the bit, six points in a row. And, and uh, John Chop down the other end had to call timeout. And from then on in, I didn't think there was really... I think from then that had the United States focused and ready to, ready to play ball. And I think that was just a matter of time for them how long and how quickly they would get the uh, game by the drop of the neck. Uh, there's a look at the Russian crowd here getting behind their team. They've added to the pageantry of this event. It's been uh, a great spectacle, a great advertisement for underage basketball around the world and the teams qualify to get here by competing in their zonal championships the russians will add a silver medal at the world's two gold medal they won last summer the european championships and now ladies and gentlemen your biggest applause for the winners of the 2015 FIBA Under-19 Women's World Championship, the United States of America. And here are the champions, the Americans who claim their sixth consecutive gold medal. It's a team that is comprised of five the gold players who have never represented the USA before at any Julia age group. Ortiz, Pat Burke, Stevens, White, and Dustin and Slocum. Well, Mick, I think they're going uh, to just take a claim to be selected again, some of those young ladies. Yeah, but um, some solid, uh, solid additions as they move forward. I'm not sure how many uh, are around in two years' time. I don't think any of them are around in two years' time. So they won't be at this level, but uh, yeah, I think Aja Wilson definitely senior player. Although that, uh, that senior team is getting well stacked. As, uh, that WNBA is uh, getting stronger. No matter pros playing around the world, U.S. girls, U.S. based players playing around the world is playing professionally is, is astounding, really. But maybe just a quick word on you know where do the players go from here? So they leave this age category. They're in college. What other opportunities do they have to play internationally? Not many. I think there's a lot, lot, you know, just like the men's men's players that leave college. You know, it's why they get the little jobs Lauren offered here, there, and everywhere. And the more that basketball expands, and it's expanding to all, all corners of the earth as far as professionalism. There's jobs out there for a lot of players. If you want to stick to it, put your mind to it. Coach 
Staley. We received the medal and our congratulations and commendations to Coach Staley for leading her team to another gold medal. Oh, outstanding. Outstanding. I mean, it's uh, sometimes you come to a tournament and you, of course, you want the gold medals, but you want to be pushed to challenge too. And they definitely got their challenge in the final. The USA will turn to the crowd and get the photograph taken. Of course, some of these players may play at the World University Games for earlier this summer. Another avenue for them to continue to represent their country. Well, we're going to pause and rise to our feet and honor the star Bengal banner. President of FIBA will now accept the trophy to the American team. We're going to go back to Colorado Springs, where the American USA basketball is based. Probably going to be passed around from hotel room to hotel room tonight. Trophy cabinet needs uh, enlarging, I think. <laughs> we'll go home with the under-19 boys, the under-19 girls, the World University Games, men and women. Uh, Asia Wilson pausing for the photograph. Mr. Moratori on the right. <laughs> Wilson can't wait to share it with her, with her teammates. <laughs> and then the requisite confetti. that the Americans uh, will relish for a long, long time to come. We'll go back, get a couple of weeks off, and they'll be back uh, in university in August, back with their teams, back in their high schools, back with their teams. Uh, thank you to all the teams. For well, plenty more basketball to come throughout event. the summer. It was Asia basket, Afro basket, and Euro basket, the America's tournament, the, the senior levels, all of this to come on livebasketball.tv. Your basketball you. fanatic, you can follow these events. All the support staff now. Quite rightly, pausing for the photograph with the team.
And there it is. Your 2015 under 19 world champions, Team USA. They claim a sixth consecutive gold medal. This event will resume in two years' time. And for me, Liam Canney, and my colleague, Mick Bett, it is goodbye for the time being. Remember, there's plenty more basketball to come as we go throughout the course of the summer.